finance bros and stock pickers on TV and YouTube love to tell you guys where to put your money. But the dirty secret of this industry is that they are very often wrong. So today I wanna to show you guys what happens when overconfidence gets met with reality. So I grabbed a financial analyst, found the worst finance predictions that aged like milk immediately after. And today we're just gonna play a referee and have fun with this and rate them how bad of a call were they really. Let's begin. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the CoffeeZilla Christmas. I'm your host, CoffeeZilla in the $10 million studio. Today we have a very special guest, Richard Coffin of The Plain Bagel. He's an investment analyst. Say hi. Hello, guys. How's it going? Coffee, thank you for having me on. Absolutely. Let's begin. Very strong earnings. These stocks are What do they do? Really I don't well. even know them. What do they do? Uh, excuse me? What does Upstart do? <laughs> uh, well, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. What kind of company is it? Yeah, I'm not. You're, you're breaking up. Oh, uh, well, sorry I guess we, we've got an audio problem there. <laughs> I don't think it's an audio no. problem. <laughs> that's uh that's a bad call. I think we can agree that I wanted to start with the baseline. That's a bad call. That's, that's pretty close to it as pretty close to a 10 as you can get, I think. Yeah, we're doing a 1 to 10 scale. 1 is bad luck. It could have happened to anybody. A 10 is a bad call. That's just a bad call. That hurts me to watch that. <laughs> it's yeah, I feel genuine pain. <laughs> yeah, it's your job as an investment analyst to know what these stocks are. This is why you go on shows like this. This guy ostensibly is some kind of a expert, right? My guess would be he's like a technical analyst to some degree, like more short term. And there are technical analysts who like don't really care what the company does. They just look at the charts and stuff. But I mean, I think you'd like Google the company <laughs> before what you, like, you know, what mention they your top do? four picks or what. Yeah, exactly. That's it get, makes me lose a bit of faith in financial journalism. <laughs> All right, dude, we're calling that a bad call. I think that's a 10. That's a 10 for me. Uh, Bad. Up next, we're going to look at some of the historical bad takes that aged like milk, starting with the dot-com bubble. The investment bank's stock analysts went on television and touted stock after stock after stock. At the heart of it was the mad scramble by bankers and venture capitalists to take hundreds of unprofitable young internet companies public. Some say the internet is so revolutionary that the usual rules for valuing a stock, such as revenues and earnings, no longer apply. Oof. Profits don't matter anymore. It's uh, sometimes sales don't even matter, which is which is encouraging. <laughs> you know what I've heard recently, actually, I've heard the same argument being like propped up again by crypto by certain people. I just talked to a guy, finance guy. He's like, yeah, I think meme coins, like they don't need to do anything. They're valuable because of the meme. I was like, that's exactly like what these guys are saying. Hey, if, you, if you're hype enough, you don't need profits. You don't need to do anything. That's going to be the next uh, iteration of the CFA curriculum when you become a, a financial analyst, chartered financial analyst. It's going to be, you know, measuring the memeology of, uh, of stocks and <laughs> crypto. Discounted <laughs> meme flows. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this kind of mean plus. I love that, yeah. Uh, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and say another pretty... That's a bad call. Pretty bad, yeah. Some people can argue when it comes to starting off, not making money is okay as long as they're going to keep growing. But, you know, if sales don't matter, profits don't matter, then... Nothing matters. Uh, I don't, nothing matters, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the memes matter, I guess. Yeah. All right, yeah. let's see the next one. What do we have up here? So this is Richard Quest. Uh, I believe he was a BNN business journalist at the time. And he's talking about the, the dot-com companies at the time. By the way, this is a documentary from 1999. So like the year before the, the bubble burst. Um, so it's it's a it's a chef's kiss uh, type of clip. <laughs> I'm not normally described of uh, as described as perverse, but you've got to be perverse to say the market's going to crash. It may have a major correction, but with low inflation, low unemployment, low interest rates, strong corporate earnings, I would be a certifiable lunatic if I said the market was going to crash. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> wow. Why the slow-mo? So good. God bless. So bad. This is not a fad. This is a revolution that's affecting the way we do business and live our lives. And that's why it's so profitable. Wow, so this was a year before the, the burst? 1999, yeah. Yeah, Ooh, right before the crash. Globe.com was like one of the most famous 
dot-com bursts. Like, it, it was, I think it set a record for the biggest IPO. Basically, like, a, a social media company at the time. <laughs> you know, he's right about the internet. Like, obviously, he's right. It's not a fad. It, it ended up changing our lives. Right. You'd have to be insane to say there's going to be a crash coming literally the year before it happens. It, it, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm kind of more That's... of a five with this one. Right. You know, I'm, I'm more in the middle. I would, I would give it maybe a... Uh, like a, a six or a seven, just because okay. uh, you have to be a certifiable lunatic. Or I'd have to be a certifiable. <laughs> That's lunatic. true. It's a little aggressive, yeah. It's so aggressive, but you're absolutely you're right. There is there's a certain luck element to where he could have said that any year, but doing it right before the crash, mm -hmm. that's incredible. He he said something about earnings, like the dot com bubble. Famously, like earnings weren't there, like and you know it kind of touched on it earlier. Like analysts were saying, oh profits don't matter right now, so that was kind of misguided, like saying. You know, that's why there's so much money being made. Well, there wasn't actually that much, like maybe for investors at the time and, and investment banks especially, but mm. you know, not really for the dot-com companies themselves, so. Wow, okay. Well, I think, I think we're roughly on the same page there. Our next clip we got here is from 2006, right before the big crash. A warning was given. Let's see if they listen. 4.5% unemployment rate, uh, GDP is growing, the demographics, in Mike. other words, family formations, Mike. all the things that factor into housing Mike, are what playing I in here, and is that is all why right, we Mike. have not had Peter. a crash. Peter. Most of the profits that people have in real estate are gonna vanish, just like the profits in the, in the, in the dot coms <laughs> in 1999-2000. <laughs> it's a fantasy, people can't sell their house, the inventories are exploding all over. That guy's so oh. smug. It's pissing me off. It's making that's me so the face, mad. That's the face everyone imagines when they think of the finance industry, I think. <laughs> that, oh, this, so This guy smug. in a suit laughing. No, oh, you think this is going to ever end? No, we're going to, the party's going to keep going. Houses are on the market for six months a year. There's no bidders. <laughs> so, uh, the price right. is going to fall through the floor. You guys I, are deluding yourself. We heard it. Six months average. We heard it loud and clear. We have two people here, right? We have Peter Schiff, who's actually making the accurate statement, uh, but Peter Schiff is kind of like known as being a, a perma bear. Like he's negative nine out of ten days, yeah. um, and he's always peddling things like gold and, and stuff. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. But you know, with 2008, warning signs in 2006, and, and talking about essentially what played out. And then we have uh, Mike Norman, I think his name is, and just hard to watch. <laughs> this guy right here, right? The guy yeah. who's like, what? What's it's, so it's, what? Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say this is a tin bad call on his part because here he is, literally someone's reading him his rights as far as like, <laughs> hey, this is exactly what's gonna happen. Yeah, and yeah. he's like, what? It's gonna be fine. Yeah, it, it's it's overconfidence at, it, at its finest. It's sort of and like, it, yeah, home prices are up, therefore they will always be up. Like that's rarely ever held in, in economic history. But again, one of those things really age like, milk <laughs> give it a score here uh so i'm gonna give it an eight there were warning signs but also you know times were good and, and money was being made but also that laugh i'll bump it up to a nine just from that laugh I all think. right <laughs> next meme <laughs> not a meme next <laughs> clip it's hard for us with and with without being flippant to even see a scenario within any kind of realm of reason that would see us losing one dollar in any of those transactions wait what am i watching here and who is cassano this guy's so, face is unbelievable <laughs> so this is joseph cassano he was an executive at aig which was one of the companies that really proliferated the issues of the dot of dot com the 2008 financial crisis not to get too technical but they sold credit default swaps which were one of the things behind the financial crisis and that's what he's talking about he's saying you know without being flippant it's hard to say hard to imagine that we lose any money on these financial products they were essentially insurance contracts on things like mortgages Whoops. so when mortgages started defaulting imagine an insurance you know provider having to pay out millions of millions all at once for all these institutions that's effectively what we're seeing in 2007. <laughs> it's called the 2008 financial crisis the warning signs were coming up in 2007. Uh, right. that's when things started to default that's when people started to realize oh there's an issue here kind of late in the game to say that you don't expect to lose any money yeah i'm finding a lot of these i'm just finding these to be bad but maybe it's all because of hindsight i'm going to give this a seven i'm going to give it a nine Next clip. Oh, this is going to be good. Oh, I'm excited about this one. Should I be worried about Bear Stearns in terms of liquidity and get my money out of there? No, no, no. Bear Stearns is fine. Do not take your money out. This is really, look, if there's one takeaway other than a plus 400 somebody, Bear Stearns is not in trouble. I mean, if anything, they're more likely to be taken over. 
Don't move your money from Bear. That's just being silly. Don't be silly. Don't be silly. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Here we go. No. Bear Stearns shares are down 90% this morning, and it's not just Bear. Pretty much every 90%. single bank is... Woo! Don't take your money out of Bear. If anything, they're going to be taken over. Oh, Gosh, Jim Cramer. That's rough. That's I think... Tough. So, Bear Stearns, they were taken over by JP morgan at ten dollars and i think they were at around a hundred dollars before things really hit the fan so pretty bad call <laughs> yeah jim that kramer this this was a rough one uh and i think he tried to paper over it later but there's no the clip the proof is in the clip and then there's the the second clip which is kind of like a follow-up to that so we saw the bear stearns clip kind of lesson from that learning from jim kramer you, you want to sell low right um right once things have have hit Crash. their bottom, that's when yeah. you sell out. This is the second half of that. You know, that's only half the statement. And, and this was after the 2008 financial crisis. So for investors, what is your advice today? Okay, whatever money you may need for the next five years, please take it out of the stock market right now, this week. I do not believe that you should risk those assets in the stock market. Even if you would take a tremendous loss in selling your stocks at this decline, you say take it out. I don't care. I do not care where stocks have been. I do not care where stocks have been. I care where they're going. But if you would need it uh, after five years, then don't touch it. R well, yes. She kind of uh, she tossed him a bit of a, a life jacket with that. You know, what about after five years? He's like, oh yeah. It's like you know, I kind of in finance, uh, kind of a rule of thumb is if you're if you need the money in the next five years, not to put it in the stock market. Like let's say it's a down payment. I think she was kind of like throwing him a life jacket to be like, oh, but what about after five years? But selling everything you need for the next five at years at the bottom, so, sell it all at the bottom. At the bottom. <laughs> Buy high and sell low, right? That's the, hey, uh, that's how you make money, right? Jim Cramer, he has a bad reputation. I don't want to be too harsh on him compared to like the AIG and stuff. I'm going to give him a six or a seven. Uh, I think it's a little alarmist and, and obviously that's not good financial advice. That's kind of how everyone was feeling at that time. So I, I don't want to. No mercy, dude. This guy has deep <laughs> finance backgrounds. I'm giving him a 10 out of 10. Bad call. Ooh, yeah. All right. So far, we've seen a lot of bad calls a lot of aged like milk moments, but this next one hasn't aged like milk yet. We're gonna find out. This is a present call. This is very recent. Let's see what you think about this one, Richard. I wanna hear your take. All right. Of course, worries of relationships between El Salvador and the IMF. Does any of that matter to some of the investors that you're talking to? No. <laughs> I don't think uh, a lot of these organizations like the IMF or World Bank are really relevant in the world based on on bitcoin they're only relevant because they can print money they can make the sdr you know they can make money out of thin air you can't do that on a bitcoin standard it oops i'm gonna have to go ahead and call a foul on that one that's um, that's, a, that's a red card i think <laughs> i just i just want to point out to everyone if you missed it he's wearing a tether shirt while saying at the same time Oh, the IMF can just print money. That, they're irrelevant. They're irrelevant to Bitcoin. <laughs> they can just print money. You can't do that in a Bitcoin standard. Um, yeah, well, maybe, That's maybe, rough. maybe not. Uh, we'll find out. I mean, I think time will uh, quickly tell on the Tether debacle. But either way, I'm I'm going to go ahead and call that a seven or an eight because I, I don't really know if it's okay, a bad call. Yeah. I'm going to preemptively call it a bad call, but we'll find out. All right. Yeah, that's fair. I think that's fair. And it, I, I do love the, uh, you know, saying the IMF is irrelevant, you know, one of the largest financial bodies in the world and irrelevant. Just, dude. I'll give it a seven so far. You know, it is it is preemptive. It is preemptive. But is. Uh, I've seen it I've is. seen the CoffeeZilla videos. I, I know I know what's up. So uh, All right. <laughs> All right. we'll see. Fair <laughs> enough, Richard. Well, you have gone through the gauntlet looking at these with me thank you for rating them with me now i have someone credible actually doing it and of course my of course genius uh calls as well and that's basically it i hope you guys at home learned something go follow richard coffin at the plain bagel for some common sense investing education and with that being said ladies and gentlemen that's it i'll see you guys in the next one